So, in the last few episodes, we've looked at the basic techniques, the types of brushes, how to thin paint, how to spray it, and shade. Now we're going to move on to masking, starting with masking straight lines with tape. For that, we are going to return to this double deck train car, passenger car from Athern, which we showed some skills on earlier in the series. We're going to paint it up for the MRT, much like this train car, except Ben Lake came up with a new scheme which kind of flips that and instead of a blue cheat line we're going to put blue top and bottom and do a gray cheat line. So the body color which we've already sprayed is Tamiya Sky Gray. The blue is Royal Blue from Tamiya also X3 and here is my favorite kind of tape, Tamiya tape. It's very thin but it holds a line very well and it's relatively low tack so there's little chance of it damaging the paint underneath. So to start the process, we need to get some tape. I like to roll out a fairly long strip, stick it to my table, and then cut it off. And then I kind of judge how much I need. It just makes it easier than trying to work off the roll. And now I'm going to do the bottom edge of the line. The longer the tape, the easier it is to get the line straight. And uh, Slice off just a little bit more to finish the end there. Got a little problem with these handles at the end, but we'll deal with those the best we can. One of the ways you can check the alignment on the tape is to hold it up and look straight down the, the uh, car in this case. It's really obvious if the tape is kinked or bent in any way from this angle. Looks pretty good to me. To make sure we get a good seal, it's important to burnish the edge. I'm using a wooden toothpick um, and just work on either side of like these seam lines here, inside the door. You just want to be sure that it seals along the edge as firm as possible so you don't get any paint bleeding under there. We got these handles on either side, grab handles on either side. I'm gonna pinch the tape around it and try and seal the edge as, as much as possible so we don't get any uh, bleed through that gap. We can also minimize it when we spray by spraying directly down on the edge of the tape rather than into it. So I'm gonna do the upper stripe now. This one's a little harder because I don't have a good alignment tool, but I'm gonna just sort of eyeball it. So I wanted to set the doors apart because I figured that since they're sliding inside and out that they'd likely get scratched if they were blue. So we're going to leave them gray. To do that, I'm going to slice off an end of the tape and then slice that piece in half and peel up the one and place it so that the straight edge of the tape is up to the edge of the door. And then I take the other piece and this time it's going to overlap, but I can put the other straight edge at the door. Right. And there you go. It's as easy as that. So I've got the one side done. Now it's time to go to the other side so we can paint. So we got the car all masked up. We got our paint mixed up and we're going to spray. Now, some folks will decide that they're going to spray either the body color or a clear coat over the edge of the tape to seal it against bleeding. I prefer not to because I think that, that risks putting too much of a ridge at the edge of the mask. Instead what I like to do is just spray the paint at a low pressure and slowly build it up along that line so that it dries and seals itself. So I'm going to dial this down to just below 20. It gives me a spray pressure of about 15 psi. The other thing you want to do is always keep the brush perpendicular to the surface so that you're not blowing paint back up under the masks. So we're just going to build it up slowly, particularly starting along the edges of those masks. You don't want to try and do this all in one pass, just like with any airbrush. So 
there we have it. I've put the blue on. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes while I clean out my airbrush. But I wanna take the tape off fairly quickly, again, to minimize the ridges that can come up at the edge of tape. And if you peel it back from the edge like this, it minimizes the tension and therefore the damage you're likely to do to the underlying paint. And it looks pretty nice. So overall it looks pretty good. We've got just a little bit of bleed under the grab irons at either end, uh, but that should be easily taken care of with a little touch up. So that's the blue on, it looks pretty sharp. We still have a little bit of work to do. We're gonna mask and paint the roof and the ends of the cars black. But we gotta let the blue dry properly because uh, this is still pretty tacky and the tape will just destroy it at this point. So the blue is nice and dry. We're ready to start doing the rest of the painting. Before I do anything else, I'm going to paint the top of the car white. This uh, reflects, no pun intended, the modern practice of passenger cars to paint the tops white or a light color, which helps reflect sunlight and keep the cars a little cooler. When you're making corners, it's a good idea to cut the tape at a bit of an angle. That way you can put the point into the corner. Tricky, and uh, then you can match it with a point from another cut wedge, and then you can fill the space. All masking is time consuming if you want to do it right, and it's worth doing it right the first time so you don't have to do a lot of correction work later or risk ruining a model that you've spent a lot of time building with a bad paint job. So that's the one side masked. I still have to do the other side. Let's do that, and uh, then we'll get into the spray boot. So I've got some Tamiya flat white mixed with Tamiya lacquer thinner in my airbrush, and I'm ready to go ahead and paint the roof of my car. White is one of those colors you want to lay on slowly and not try to do it too heavy because it will take some time to cover and you don't want to overload the surface and cause runs. Just start going back and forth over it until it looks good and uniform. So I'm pretty happy with the density on the white. I'm gonna let that dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come back and spray the black on the ends of the car and along the edge of the roof. So it's the next day. We're ready to do some more masking and painting. The white roof is nice and smooth. Now I just need to mask so we can paint this black line here and the ends of the car. All right, so we'll just start by airbrushing black. I'm spraying it about 15 or 18, somewhere between 15 and 18 PSI here. Keep the pressure a little low so that I can minimize bleeding.
So the passenger car is looking pretty good. We got some other details that we need to figure out and we're gonna do those by hand painting. So let's get to that. Along the way, we'll give you a couple tips about painting with a brush. So we got a little Tamiya flat aluminum that I've put into a cup. It's best to paint out of a cup rather than from the bottle itself. And in another cup, I have some Tamiya acrylic thinner. The reason for the thinner is before I start painting, I'm gonna dip the brush into the thinner and blot out most of the excess so that paint doesn't dry in the bristles of the brush, which can ruin your brush and destroy your paint job. Then pick up a little paint on your brush, get rid of the excess on the side. And if you get a little extra thinner on your brush, you can get it to run up to the edges just a little easier, almost like a wash. Try to keep your strokes to a minimum, but, uh, and keep them going in one direction. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So no matter how careful I am with masking and spraying, there's always a couple of problem areas with either paint bleeding under the tape or a little overspray. Okay, so we got a couple areas of blue to touch up, so I put just a little bit in a cup. Got some thinner, already wet my brush. And when doing touch-ups like this, you want to use a, a, the minimum amount of paint that is necessary to just go over the affected areas. And then kind of lightly blend it in by squishing the brush around on it. That's a technical term. So as you can see, the line between the black and the white here is just a little uneven where the tape was hanging over. So I'm gonna to touch this up. Now this is a little touchy, huh, no pun intended, because it's right on the, the line. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm using a brush that you might think is a little bigger than you would need for touch-ups. But this allows me to hold a little more paint and it allows the tip to stay a little more consistent. So I should be able to do this in one easy stroke. Now should is one thing to say. Let's see how it goes. Well, that doesn't look too bad, and I'm just gonna leave it alone. So that is our passenger car basically done, masked and painted. All it really needs now is some decals to really dress it out nicely. That does show you the basic techniques for straight line masking using tape. Now all I have to do is the rest of these.